Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're doing well. Um, it's been a couple of weeks now since my last video and I do apologise. Um, it's just been wild getting things together ready for the end of the year. So yes, I am back with another video and this time I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, so in this video I'm going to be talking about a book that I have read, well, listened to, um, you know, a few a few weeks ago, and I loved it so much. I thought I would share it with you guys because Sharon is caring. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Um, so if you're new to my channel, then my name is Natalie. If you are returning, then welcome back, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Right, I'm going to get straight into it. So, the book. The book is called God is a Matchmaker by Derek Prince. Now, Derek Prince um, was a very famous teacher, you know, evangelist. Um, and I've heard, I'd heard about Derek Prince a lot. I'd seen his books, you know, not really read them, but I had seen a lot of them come up, um, you know, as, as reading recommendations for me based on the types of book I, books I read. And when this one, actually, I don't, I can't remember how I found this book. I don't know if it came up as a suggestion, um, but what struck me the most was the, the title of the book, God is a Matchmaker. And I, um, you know, I've been kind of listening to Audible audiobooks recently, and I thought, you know, I'd give it a try. I don't really, I don't read a lot of books about relationships and stuff because I don't actually know why. I, I just never really have. I've got a few, some I've read, some I'm still waiting to read, but I'd read another book by Derek Prince called um, The Secrets of a Prayer Warrior and I'll, you know, probably talk about that in a different video. So um, I picked up, the, I, I, I um, decided to read this book and the book is essentially about Derek's um, life and two marriages you know he he was married twice once to a lady called Lydia and um, the second time to a lady called Ruth and in this book he basically talks about briefly what his life was before he met you know his his wives or these women and what his life was like you know during his first marriage and then um, a brief period of kind of being single after his first wife passed away and then he went on to meet his second wife. So it's so interesting to get to hear about the stories and then actually what I really like about this book as well is that um, at the end of each chapter they have what they call testimonies. So um, other people who have read the books I, I assume from like years ago have sent in their own kind of testimonies of how the book has helped them. Now you know, when Derek kind of outlines the history or, or the story of, of how, you know, he met his first wife and, you know, the role that God played, you know, in each, like, I, I don't know how to describe it, like each encounter he had with God, which led to him meeting his wives, you know, it's so amazing. And I've always been a big believer in God will definitely lead you to your spouse. And I've always also been a believer in it may not be conventional. You know, I used to have this um, funny story that I used to tell people and I used to say, you know, I'm going to meet my future husband in Starbucks or I will change it to Costa Coffee now because I'm not a huge fan of Starbucks anymore. Anyway, I'd meet my husband in the Costa Coffee shop and I'd have the book and then he would have the same book and then would like drop the books. It, it was like a whole thing, like a movie. Um, and that was the image I had in my head. But anyway, always in addition to that, I always used to think God is definitely, definitely. And I never used the word matchmaker, but I always thought of God as the connector, you know, who would, if you committed your ways to him, he would lead you in your daily living and put you in situations, put you and your future spouse in situations where your paths would cross. And then if you were both open to hearing God's voice, you know, and listening out for God's voice, there would be that kind of connection that would bring the, the both of you together. And the other thing I, I always think is that, um, you know, we, we definitely need to hear from God in these areas. And I know all of my kind of viewers or listeners will definitely believe that as well um 
so anyway I've got my notes here because I had to make some notes of the review so I um, I'm not going to be able to share everything and um, because there's honestly so much um, in, in that book but I just wanted to share a, a few points that kind of I focused on when I was listening to the book and I'm now on my second time listening to it um, and each time I just pick up new things and reflect on new things now you know the one theme that's very very um, that runs all throughout the book is about purpose Derek was very clear on his purpose before he met his first wife. He knew exactly what God had called him to do. Um, and so when God led him to his first wife and even his second wife, it fit, you know, what God had called him to do. It just made sense. It clicked, you know, and God had matched him perfectly to a woman who would, you know, be his helpmate. And even for his, his wives as well, you know, he definitely had a part to play in their lives. So there was purpose attached to their connections. There was purpose attached to their meetings, to their marriages. And, you know, when you listen to the stories of what they went on to do, um, you know, what God ministered to him at the beginning of his first marriage and how that then came to manifest, you know, it's just so amazing. It makes you think about the actual purpose of marriage, of God bringing two people together, man and woman. Woman. the other thing that the other theme that runs throughout this book is it's definitely not straightforward you know like I said I always had this image of I would meet a guy and Costa Coffee would be reading the same book and then would go on to live happily ever after um, and what Derek talks us through using biblical references and examples in the Bible is that there will be challenges and um, you know even when God has led you to this person it's not always going to be clear and this isn't a story for everyone don't get me wrong there are people who meet their spouses and they have a very different you know everyone has a different story the point that Derek makes is that sometimes you know God will be unconventional so for instance his first wife was I think around 20 years older than he was and if you can imagine what in the 80s and the 70s 60s that probably was a little bit unusual his second wife was considered an invalid and um, because she had severe back pains and actually he was discouraged from marrying her because it was you know they, they thought she would be a burden to him and wouldn't be able to actually support him in his ministry the way a wife should so you know it highlights the fact that when God works you know God doesn't follow the human pattern of behavior he doesn't follow the human template of how things should be he doesn't even follow our own logical kind of wishes and desires always because when he has a bigger plan that plan must come to pass and it will do so in ways that we probably don't understand but what comes through at the end all Always, and even in Derek's book is that God is always in control and God has always gone ahead of him to to sort everything out to make the crooked path straight even before Derek has realized that there's a crooked path and that was so encouraging to me because you know I think sometimes in life not just in relationships we tend to think everything might be hunky-dory and you know when things aren't hunky-dory you know people might look at us and think oh what did you do to deserve such an awful thing happen to you which sounds awful to say but honestly I know there are people who think that way there are Christians who think that way um so in this book you know Derek gives so many examples of how challenging his own life was his life with his first wife and with his second wife Ruth and how God was actually able to lead them both you know through it you know if you're single or even married you know I can't even describe just how meaningful this book is you know to a Christian who is single or married because it's not just about the relationship aspect of it it's about how God uses the connection of two people you know to bless thousands and thousands and millions of people and if you're looking you know out for a marriage or a relationship that God will connect you um you know connect you with your spouse if you're looking for a godly marriage or a godly spouse who can help you you know to accomplish the things that God has placed in your life to accomplish the vision that he has given you then this book is definitely something because it always helps to have a reference and yes we've got the biblical references but you know to read it in the life of someone like Derek Prince to read the testimonies um, of other people who have read and been blessed by this book there is nothing like it he also goes on to talk about the impact of families or you know the role of pastors and parents in, in, in marriages and in relationships you know and a lot of it even challenges is the things that we would consider normal now you know so the role of a pastor he breaks it down in such a way that you know it just 
it makes sense you know in my experience not that I've been married before but from the things that I've heard and seen you know the way Derek breaks it down the way he breaks down the role of the parents now if you're from an African um, household then you may not be too shocked because a lot of what he says is still um, relevant but again it's the way he breaks it down in the biblical way he talks about the role of attitudes in marriage and there's one thing that I always used to do and I always used to think I was weird for doing this but what one thing I, I you know I am um, I don't mind confessing to you guys being transparent is I I can have a mean temper yeah no one can imagine it when I say it but it's ungodly sometimes god forgive me please and i'm working on it i am so working on it it's it's a combination of a mean temper and impatience so the two together is just an unholy mix it just doesn't work anyway one thing I started to do when I started to pray about marriage and meeting my future husband you know the one area that God challenged me to do was actually how are you preparing yourself you know I'd already determined in my mind that nope I'm perfect I'm this and that and God challenged me I was like are you really though? I mean, don't you have some things you need to work on? Not in a horrible way, but I think again, you know, Proverbs 31 talks about a virtuous woman and there are certain characteristics and attributes that so many women in the Bible carry that, you know, it challenged me to actually look at myself. And so, you know, when Derek talks about attitudes and actions, he talks about attitudes coming first. Now, going back to um, what I wanted to share about, you know, what I used to do that I thought was weird, but Derek talks about is, practicing with the people that are already in your life you know when you're preparing for marriage in the same way you will be in that marriage context you might be the same person or you should be the same person in the family context in the friendship context in the work context what whatever it is there should be a standard this is natalie this is you you know whether good or bad so what he talks about is there are certain attitudes of submission of love of of giving of self-giving you know that you need to practice you know and practice is a strange term to use but it really is practice you need to practice those things those attitudes even before you get married because <laughs> marriage is not a place to practice marriage for some people is a place of war you know or spiritual warfare for some there are, there are different challenges that you don't even imagine. For others, you know, there are things that come out and just blindside you. So the idea is you need to be as prepared as possible. Now you can never be 100% prepared, but you do need to be as prepared as possible. I always used to practice on my mum. I would, you know, if she and I got into an argument or a disagreement, I would always try and calm myself down. I'd count to 10. I would maybe excuse myself and leave the situation for a while just to kind of woosa um, and make sure that I didn't say anything that I would regret. Um, and I always used to think, oh, you know, your mum's going to be different than your husband. Why would you practice on your mum? But when Derek said it, I thought, oh my God, I am not crazy. I was right to be doing that. Um, and you know, he's absolutely right. The, the things that we should be, we should be now, the attitudes we should have now are the very same ones where you're going to have in a marriage. So why wouldn't you practice those things now? And that's the point he makes. So, you know, when you read the book, it takes you on such a good journey, even from the beginning of who he was before he met his first wife and his second wife, even to meet in his second wife, you know, the types of challenges that he faced. You know, I've got my own personal challenges that I always wonder how a future husband would cope with, you know, health challenges. And I remember everyone used to say to me, and they still do, you know, people will say to me, Nat, you know, you need someone who can look after you. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm still a princess. Health challenges or not, I do need someone who can look after me and spoil me and wait on me hand and foot. And why, I mean, why wouldn't I, why don't I deserve that? Why wouldn't I be that princess? You know, that aside, <laughs> it's really about having a partner who maybe will not, you know, um, count you out, you know, because there's a part of you that isn't quite perfect. Um, you know, and if you have a health challenge, whether that's physical or otherwise, that can be difficult to live with as a partner. You know, even as a as a person, I always wonder and, you know, even feel bad to a certain extent for, for 
the, my loved ones because sometimes it is a burden for them um, and to hear that Derek went through the exact same thing with his second wife honestly I could have cried when I listened to that story because everything that I had thought you know would count me out for a good partner you know are the things that qualified his wife to be his mate you know, this is a man who had a mission, a huge mission, you know, to go out and preach the gospel to the world. So if you've listened this far, you know, and your interest is peaked, then please, please, please go and pick up this book. Read through it, buy a copy for your mum, your auntie, your sister, your cousin, whoever you can in your life. And it's not just for women, you know, this is for men. Like I said, this is not a, a singles or, or marriage. It's honestly just the book about relationships, about purpose and you know the fact that it's about about God above anything else. You know is what's is what makes reading it so so fun and so enlightening because each time I read it I just get new things you know so if you do manage to pick up a copy you know please leave a comment um in the comment section let me know what you think if you've already read it then please let me know what your thoughts are there might be things in the book that I haven't even mentioned now I listen to it on audible so I will leave a link if I can in the um, description bar below and I will also leave a link to the actual physical copy from Amazon um, in the description bar below so if you do want to grab a copy then you can um, and yes I hope you really enjoy it I hope you've enjoyed this video hopefully I wasn't rambling for too long but like I said if you can please please pick up a copy of this book and read because I know you will be blessed okay thank you guys so much for tuning into today's video and I will see you in my next one bye